economy and serve our communities. We're one team, a team where everybody contributes and every player counts. We're hiring with immediate openings for those who want to help run one of America's leading railroads, earn competitive benefits, paid training for conductors at nearly $25 per hour, and great advancement opportunities. Apply today at csx.com slash careers. CSX. Game on. Welcome to Stegman Coliseum in Athens, Georgia, where tonight we tip off the second half of the SEC conference schedule as the Vanderbilt Commodores have come to town to take on the 14th-ranked Georgia Lady Bulldogs. As we take a look at the conference standings, you'll see that Georgia is in a three-way tie for fourth place with Ole Miss and Florida, two teams they've already beaten, while Vanderbilt playing their best basketball of the year in the midst of a two-game SEC winning streak has risen to 10. And good evening, I'm Matt Stewart, joined by Coach Mark Sloniker. And Coach, the Lady Bulldogs began the season with the goal of finishing top four in the standings so they could get back to the SEC championship game and this year win it. They really set themselves up for it and really play strong. The schedule unfolded four out of the first five conference games on the road. But they weathered those storms, they got a lot of wins, so they're in great position right now. Two of the best defensive players in the entire country on the floor here tonight, starting with Jordan Cambridge. Oh, a healthy Jordan Cambridge. She wrecks havoc on the SEC. She's going to get her hands on basketball. She's going to set her teammates up for shots. Great assist maker over four game and six. Oh, you better be protecting that basketball when she's around. She's going to pop it and go all night long. And she has a great ability to get just enough points. But her team needs it. The little floaters in the lane get that deep penetration. Meantime, Q Morrison not having just a great defensive season, but a great all-around season. A yeah, different defender than uh, Cambridge. It's more of a lockdown defender more than Steelers get their share of it. But, boy, this year she has really stepped up her game offensively. The team's needed her. Super senior year. She has had to rally the team back when they've been down. She's had to step up big and close games on the road. She's done it all for these Lady Dogs. Her leadership is not any better in the conference than hers. She's had four 20-point games this season. As a matter of perspective, she had the three in her first four seasons on campus. And both Q Morrison and Jordan Cambridge have been named to the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year watch list. Only 15 finalists in the entire country and two of them on the floor here tonight. Q Morrison averaging 14.4 points per game. She's also number three in the SEC, right under five assists per game at 4.9. And she is the top free throw shooter in conference play, 39 out of 42 at the free throw line in league games. And the Lady Bulldogs in red and white will start on offense. George is going to have to tech, attack that Vanderbilt zone. Vanderbilt goes right down at 2-3. Morrison out on the wing, skip pass to Sarah Ashley Barker, air ball, but Morrison gets the rebound, missed the reverse put in, and off of Vanderbilt's hands. Yeah, Sarah Barker, Ashley, she, Sarah Ashley Barker, sorry, was out here early today trying to work on her shot. Didn't get a good one off there. Q Morrison really had an easy layup, didn't have to do the reverse. Barker will try again, this time from the corner. Starts 0 for 2. Rebound controlled by Alexander for Vanderbilt. Here's a look at the starting five for the Commodores. Cambridge, Washington, Moore, Alexander, and Smith. Brene Alexander, their leading scorer at 15.5 points per game. Cut to the basket. Alexander beat her player on defense, and there's the basket. Coons is an outstanding defensive player for Georgia. She's got her hands full tonight. It's a little offsides right there against Alexander. I think Vanderbilt's going to try to exploit that matchup tonight. Turnover by Morrison. And a 4-0 lead for the Commodores as Kalen Smith knocks down the basket. Again, this sets up their zone press. So they love the run, love the disrupt you, get you out of your rhythm. And another turnover nearly forced by the Vanderbilt defense right there. They force about 19 a game. Again, what sets up their press is scoring. So they go off to a great start here. Those two quick buckets. They can set their press. Again, just all it does is just, just let, let Georgia get into a rhythm, get comfortable out there. 
Georgia started the game with two three-point shots. When you're at home, you don't seem to mind it as a coach too much. On the road, you really want an inside touch. At home, be a little more forgiving. But Georgia needs to get some inside touches against the zone. Stady inside to Isaacs, and a shot clock violation on the Lady Bulldogs. An auspicious start for Georgia here at home. Again, that zone very disruptive. Georgia's going to lock down their defense. So Vanderbilt can't set that zone. Then you got to be a little more patient attacking that zone defense. Oddly enough, Georgia has been better on the road than they have been at home this season. Slightly, but nonetheless better record-wise. Eight and one on the road and eight and three at home. The two tough losses in league play. LSU, Tennessee went right to the wire. Last touch by the Commodores as Barker with the strong defense forces the cough up by Ayanna Moore. A really good defensive possession for Georgia. They needed it. They've struggled a little bit offensively. Parker, great job staying with it. Smart play to knock it back off her. Isaacs, there's the cut to the basket and the layup for the Lady Bulldogs as Barker gets in the scoring column. And one of the things you want to do against this Vanderbilt press is you want to attack. You want to break it and go right to the rim. Try to draw fouls, get layups. You don't want to reset your offense so they can set their defense. Go at them. Cambridge misses the three-pointer. Long rebound into the hands of the Lady Bulldogs. Coombs to Stady. Game tied at four. A really good defense by Lady Dog team. It's a rebound there. But look for Georgia to run as much as they can. They don't want Vanderbilt to set their defense. They want to attack them in those kind of matchups. Two on ones, three on twos all night long. Lady Dogs are 0 for 3 when they try to score out of their setup offense, but 2 for 2 in transition. Commodores back on top. Well, Washington, nice job at the mid range. You better close out on her quick. She's confident tonight. See, she's really comfortable out there. You've got to get a hand up on her early to discourage her from shooting. Stady, there's a double team, and it's swiped away by Cambridge. The first of what no doubt will be many steals for her tonight. And then Q Morrison blocks her shot. So how about that? The two Naismith Defensive Player of the Year watch list nominees going defense against defense here. Well, look at Cambridge. Stady not aware. You always have to be aware where she is on defense. But Q Morrison disciplined not to foul her body. Patient to block that shot. Two really outstanding players. Right there, making plays. Two-point lead Vanderbilt nearly four minutes into this game. Georgia's been getting off to great starts in their last four games. They'd outscored their opponents 83-38 in the first quarter. That's about an average of 21 to 10. Barker misses the three-pointer. Rebound by Isaac's going to go right back to the basket with it and miss. Might have rushed it a little bit, and then Coombs commits the foul in the backcourt. That's the second layup Georgia's missed, where they really have rushed themselves. They have a little more time, a little more patience. And you can see what Vanderbilt's Coach Ralph's strategy right there. Her, her soft press, sometimes it goes hard, trying to get steals, but just disrupts you, drive back to that zone. Georgia didn't start attacking that zone until it was about 16 seconds to go on the shot clock. So it eats clock up, shortens the game, gives you a better opportunity to win. Cambridge, the floater, air ball, Barker with it. Bandy very quick with the hands, just slapping at the ball, forces another turnover by Georgia, and the floater bank in by Cambridge. So Cambridge, Washington, Alexander, and Smith have all scored buckets here. Stady gets tied up in the paint. They call jump ball. It'll be Bandy's ball. Well, Vanderbilt has a distinct size disadvantage facing Stady and the big for Georgia here tonight. But Coach Joni Taylor warned that Vandy, despite their disadvantage, lack of size, has done a very good job against bigs in this conference this season. Held Olympia Boston to 10 points in the game against South Carolina. Yeah, they're going to swarm Stady. Nice shot by Smith. Again, getting Stady away from the basket, hitting those mid-range jumpers. But, yeah, they're going to... Swarm Stady, make other people beat him with a jump shot, trying to limit her touches as much as they can. 
Smith has two of Vanderbilt's first 10 points and a six-point lead for the Commodores. She was left open. Isaacs chose not to take the shot. Coombs. And her shot was deflected out of bounds by Smith. And we have our first timeout of the night. Great start for Vanderbilt. They've hit five of their first nine shots. Georgia only two of eight. Commodores lead by six. The land is dying. And the machines are out of control. Whatever comes, I will be ready. Ready to experience new career growth and the joy of helping others? As the number one brand in property damage restoration, ServPro is dedicated to restoring hope to those who need it most. And we need you to join our team. We have thousands of jobs available with premium compensation and the opportunity to move into management and even ownership and access to the best training available. No industry experience required. Visit ServPro.com careers to see how we take care of people who take care of people. Here's a look at the two Naismith Defensive Player of the Year watch list nominees. Jordan Cambridge, 4.3 assists per game, which is number six in the SEC. Her four steals per game not only leads the SEC, it's number three in the nation in the NCAA. Her 80 total steals, also number one in the nation. While Q Morrison at 4.8 assists per game, number three in the conference, or 2.0 steals per game, or seventh in the conference. Yeah, these players, just so much fun to watch. I really enjoy seeing them play, catching them on, on the SEC network all the time. Again, and different defenders. Cambridge is going to be, not that she's not a great lockdown defender, but she's asked more to get in passing lanes, steals, hands on basketball. Q Morrison does some of that, but she is going to lock you down a lot of times, take on the one-on-one -on -one challenge, that really make life difficult for you. So, again, two just great players in the SEC. It is one of the, two of the reasons that make this conference so great, so much fun to watch and be a part of. And Q Morrison is a two-time SEC all-defensive team member and the reigning SEC co-defensive player of the year. Cambridge coming back from an ACL. She had not played since two seasons ago. Yeah, you might see them being co-winners again. But there's a lot of good other candidates in the conference as well. But good for her, like we mentioned, just seeing her healthy. Uh, you know, one of the things when you follow college basketball, you want to see the players excel. You want to see them do the best they can be, play to their talent, their skill sets. You want them healthy. So she's battled back hard, and uh, she's just a delight to watch play college basketball. Well, Vanderbilt already has four steals here tonight. Cambridge has one, Washington has one, Alexander has one, and Smith has one as well. Shot clock at one, and another shot clock violation. That's the second shot clock violation coach for the Lady Bulldogs in the first five and a half minutes of this game. Yeah, well, coming out of timeout, inbounds underneath the baseline there. You know if the shot clock is low. you got to be aware of that and get that shot off. Be prepared to shoot a lot quicker than they were. You saw first-year head coach Shea Ralph on the sideline for Vanderbilt. One of the great players to come out of the UConn program and an assistant to Gino Ariema for the last 13 seasons. Yeah, outstanding coach. What a career. She is just a legend in college. Basketball. What an outstanding high school player she was as well. But right there is kind of what she mentioned today, the unforced turnover there. She's thrown it out of bounds because no pressure and lost possession for Vandy. Isaacs puts it on the floor and got stripped. Steal number five for the Commodores. Into the post they go. Kalen Smith back out to Cambridge. To the corner, and Cambridge missed the three. Battle for the rebound. It's won by the Lady Dogs. Isaacs with it. We're getting deep into the quarter, and no substitutions yet in the game. George doesn't have to make a decision, you know, 
here in a few minutes as they shuffle their lineup a little bit. Hugh Morrison misses the three. Stady in the paint. Third basket for Georgia. Every one of them has come in the paint. Two of them were in transition and were layups. Absolutely. Another missed three. But, again, against that zone, you get opportunity as an offensive player to really hit attack the offensive glass. Box out responsibilities can be missed a lot. And Jenna Stady, being a veteran she is, attacked that glass, got the easy stick back. Meantime, Georgia's 0 for 7 shooting on the perimeter. Kaylin Smith, the spin move. And Smith with her third bucket. She's got six of Vandy's 12. And Smith and Washington come out of here really relaxed, ready to play. Not necessarily the two leading scores for them, but they've come out just looking very confident offensively. Inside Stady, more points in the paint for Georgia. That's what you have to do against that zone. Georgia, Georgia does it like most teams. Runs a high low against the zone. If you get that ball in that mid a high post area like Isaacs just did, you can find your other big. Fumbled out of bounds by Alexander. Just the second turnover for Vanderbilt. They've turned Georgia seven times. Vandy's had trouble with turnovers themselves. They are 13th in the conference, averaging 17 and a half per game. And Georgia's trying to settle the game down a little bit. Get Vandy back at these stats the way they're supposed to be. Get Vandy turning the ball over and Georgia not turning the ball over. Barker launches a three and it rims out on her. Alexander, air ball. Q Morrison pushes. Georgia trying to get into offense before Vandy sets up on defense. Another miss on the perimeter for Georgia. Alexander, Vandy pushes back the other way. More on the dribble. Sasha Washington, who starred at nearby Collins Hill High School, dishes to Cambridge, who gets the bounce. Cambridge with her second bucket. Anytime you see your defender going to double the post, that's an automatic basket cut. Cambridge saw that. Her player, Coons, tried to dig down on the post a little bit. Great basket cut, great pass right here. And your rule is, hey, cut that basket, get the backside of their head. Beautiful pass. And Cambridge, again, just understanding the game, understanding the moment, making Georgia pay. Foul in the backcourt was called on Ayanna Moore. Substitutions for the Lady Bulldogs as Chloe Chapman checks in and Michaela Coombs comes out. Now Chapman and Coombs aren't really known as three-point shooters. Coombs doesn't really ever put them up. Chapman either. So Chapman just needs to do a good job of penetrating the zone, finding her shooters, finding her scores. Just like that. And Morrison with the three-pointer. So after five misses for the Lady Bulldogs, Morrison finally knocks down the first three for Georgia and the Lady Bulldogs cut it to three. With that shooting start, smart move by Coach Taylor to put Morrison over the two. Bring Chapman at the one, get Morrison so she can get some offense going. It's Bella Lachance who checked in at the last whistle. Lachance doesn't have a, a lot of minutes, but she has good stats, good numbers. Shot clock down to two and banks it in. That's the second time that Cambridge has hit a floating banker in the paint. Six points for her. You've got to really limit her penetration. Again, Chapman, Cardinal Sin. You don't want to pick your drill up right there against any kind of pressure. Knocked out of bounds by Kaylin Smith. The camera just knows she's aware of time and score. Knows the shot clock's running down. Again, no weak side help to cut off her penetration. Georgia's got to collapse right there. Cut off her penetration. Cambridge coming off one of the best games of her career. Scored 19 points, had 10 rebounds in their victory against Auburn. And Q Morrison's starting to light it up a little bit. Second basket for Morrison. She's got five of Georgia's 13. Final eight seconds of the quarter. We talked earlier, Q Morrison's what a great leader. And understand, again, she knows her team is struggling. So she should put it on her shoulders. And Morrison blocks Cambridge shot at the horn. And that is the end of the first quarter. Vanderbilt with a three-point lead. They've led by as much as six in this game. Heading to the second quarter. Ready to experience new career growth and the joy of helping others? As the number one brand in property damage restoration, ServPro is dedicated to restoring hope to those who need it most. And we need you to join our team. We have thousands of jobs available with premium compensation and the opportunity to move into management and even ownership and access to the best training available. 
No industry experience required. Visit surpro.com slash careers to see how we take care of people who take care of people. Huh. So if Geico's 85, that makes you... Are you asking if I'm 85 years old? Sea turtles live to be 150, so... <laughs> no, I, I, I was not. Geico. Saving people money for 85 years. Start of the second quarter in Athens. Vanderbilt leading 14th ranked Georgia 16-13. Matt Stewart along with Coach Mark Sloniker. And a look back at Vanderbilt's 81-66 victory over Auburn. Ayanna Moore, the freshman with an SEC best for her this season, 22 points and hit five three-pointers. She was on fire. She couldn't miss. She really feeling it there. Again, at home, taking advantage of it. Tonight, only be able to get one shot off in the first quarter, so you know it's a point of emphasis for the Lady Dogs to try to shut her down, not get her much scoring opportunities. Vanderbilt in the midst of a two-game winning streak after a very difficult 85-30 loss to number one South Carolina. But having Jordan Cambridge back has been big for Coach Shea Ralph's team. Still learning how to fight through adversity told her players today as they huddled up at half court, you still haven't played your best game yet. Let's go out and play our best game tonight. Absolutely. Again, you got to be encouraging your first year of the program, trying to get them to believe. And one of the toughest hurdles you got to get is how to learn how to win on the road. That is a tough part of building the program. They've come out with a lot of confidence tonight. Commodores 1-5 and five on the road, 0-3 oh on the road in the SEC this year. Errant pass, stolen. Nicholson ends up with it. Inside Nicholson, no one guarded her, and she passed up a shot underneath to Morrison, who hit the three. Even better for Georgia. Game tied at 16 as Morrison hits her second three-pointer. And if maybe eight straight points for Q. She is feeling it right now. We usually talk about quarters, how games go, but first five minutes of this game, Vanderbilt outplayed Georgia. The last five minutes of the first quarter, Georgia outplayed Vandy. Here's Q. Morrison getting Georgia up to a great start. Nice shot out there on the wing by Kalen Smith over Nicholson. And Kalen Smith has eight points. Way above her average. And Vanderbilt's defense forces a turnover of Georgia's. They trap Chloe Chapman over on the other side. Well, Chapman just had the turnover, trying to drive the baseline in the traffic. Got the deflection. Cambridge took it from her. That's the second time that she's come across half court. Head down, not seeing the place. Set your teammates up in that situation. Don't put yourself in that trap situation. Kalen Smith. Off the rim this time. Nicholson chases down the loose ball, and Georgia will push it across half court with Morrison. Georgia really needs a lift in their bench tonight. This is going to be a critical factor in this game. Nicholson's played really well recently, has so much talent, potential. Nearly stolen again, a backdoor court, backdoor cut by Chapman. Kind of got the Vanderbilt defense leaning down court. They thought they had the steal, they were getting ready to run out. They were, Nicholson, nice job with the pass right there, but Barker, just like so many of the Georgia players tonight, you got to fake the zone, you got to ball fake, pass fake it, get them moving, get them shifting, then go put the ball where you want to put it right now. The Lady Dawes are telegraphing their passes and a lot of deflections by Vanderbilt. Alexander, they whip it around to find the open man on the arc, and that's Ayanna Moore who knocks down her first three-pointer. And the first one for Vanderbilt tonight. Commodore's back on top by three. Coach Ralph definitely wants to get her involved. She can hit those set threes all night long. Great ball movement by Vanderbilt last possession. Nicholson on the wing. And Mallory Bates tried to save it, knocked it out of bounds. And Vanderbilt going, really doing a nice job right there. The back cut, second time we've seen that back cut. Now George is scrambling over the place. And Moore standing out there in the rotation, just too slow and too long to get to her. She made Georgia pay that possession. Reagan Richardson checks in for Georgia. Lady Bulldogs once again playing without Jillian Hollingshed tonight. 
She did practice with the team today. She's been recovering from mono, been out for three weeks. They are hopeful that she'll be able to play on Sunday against the Florida Gators. That's a big loss for Georgia. She is really outstanding freshman. And freshman of the week, I think, two times already. A really outstanding player. Chapman gets into the paint. Rebound control by Vanderbilt. It's Demi Washington with the rebound. She averages right at five of those a game, along with six points per game. Washington underneath couldn't handle the pass. She stepped out of bounds. And Vanderbilt just being disrupted right here with a 2 1 2 press. Trying to get a trap if they can. If they don't, they'll just drop back to their zone. Just trying to be disruptive, trying to shorten the game, eat clock, give Georgia a lot less time to attack and check out those shot clock violations. Traveling on Nicholson. Tenth turnover for Georgia already. Fortunately for the Lady Bulldogs, that's one of the rare dead ball turnovers. So many of them have been live ball turnovers that have led to scoring opportunities for the Commodores. Alexander, high bounce off the back iron. Alexander one for three now shooting. Vanderbilt's got this lead and their two leading scorers really have not put up big numbers yet. Another steal. Got seven of them already for Vanderbilt. Cambridge again getting that pass and anticipating where the pass would go. She just does a really good job of reading the opponent's eyes. She does, man. She Much like a safety yes. in the defensive backfield, reading the quarterback's eyes. Where's the quarterback's eyes going? That's where the ball is going to go. And Cambridge, much like that. Tracks the ball on the basketball court. She really does. Great anticipation. And just so much fun to watch her play, play this game. They really have been able to speed up Georgia offensively. Bates knocks down the mid-range jumper. Georgia back to within one. But they've done a really good job of speeding up Georgia's usually very sure-handed and reliable guards. They really have. And they, again, hands on balls and are forcing Georgia to take jump shots instead of those inside touch baits that Stady got a few of. Easy layups, short bank shots. Kalen Smith missed, got her own miss, and then the shot was blocked by Bates. Mallory Bates did a good job of helping out on defense right there and knocking the ball out of bounds. And a timeout on the floor with Vanderbilt leading by one, just under five to play here in the first half. Partner, center of town, high noon. Nope, Daisy's got last one lessons at noon. High two o'clock, that work? I got a spur fitting at two o'clock, how's about three? We don't need any more overscheduling, but we could all use more ways to save. What about Tuesday? Big first half for Kalen Smith, eight points, two rebounds and three assists so far in the game. Oh, what a start for her, the pride of West Palm Beach. She has come out ready to play. She's making those Georgia bigs at the garter on the perimeter. Just enough, just far enough away from the basket to get them away. But she has produced and delivered, and what beautiful passes she's made in those back cuts tonight. And you can see for the season, she has not been a big playmaker. Less than two assists per game, but she's coming off a career-high four assists 
in their victory over Auburn in their last game, and she's already got three assists here tonight. And yeah, when you're game planning for Vanderbilt, you know, you're, you're worried about Cambridge at all times, right? You know, she's averaged just around 10 a game, but Alexander and Moore have been the big scorers so far, so you're worried about those three. So, you know, Smith is that the other one, you know, he gives quite a bunch of attention maybe in the scouting report. But, boy, she is making teams pay right now and up in her game. What a great start for her. One point lead Vanderbilt just under five to play here in the second quarter. Matt Stewart along with coach Mark Sloniker. Thanks for joining us here tonight as Mallory Bates kicks it out of bounds. Coach Ralph has given a chance a lot of minutes tonight trying to rest those perimeter players to the Georgia perimeter players really get after your defense. They hound you. They wear you down. They fatigue you. So she's going into the bench. And again, LaChance puts up great numbers. Just doesn't have a lot of minutes typically. Foul away from the ball underneath Bates and I believe was that Washington. Yes, Demi Washington were battling for position and Bates gets called for the foul. Alexander trying to get it in. It was tipped by Georgia and a steal by the Lady Bulldogs. Morrison and Stady back in. Coach Taylor getting her veterans in there, the productive players so far this game. Lob inside for Stady, and that's going to be trouble for the Commodores if they cannot stop that because Stady is so much bigger than any of the bigs for Vanderbilt. And Richardson really recognized that. She's been sitting over there observing the game, watching us attack, Georgia attack the zone. And she really did a nice job of recognition early in her time on the court. Hey, get the ball to Jenna Stady. This is the first lead for Georgia tonight. Nearly stolen by Morrison. Coombs down on the deck. Does come away with the steal. And then they play volleyball with it, and the Commodores recapture possession in the backcourt. Vanderbilt's gone nearly four minutes without scoring. And a foul on Georgia as Moore tried to split the defense. Yeah, base right there again. You got to cut off Vanderbilt's dribble drive penetration. Just a step slow. She needs to be a one step sooner. She could have cut off that penetration, make them kick. It gets in just in time to foul. Second team foul on Georgia in the quarter. Ayanna Moore at the line. She has three points here tonight. This is the first free throws by either team. Moore a 73% free throw shooter, averaging 12 points per game. Scored only 23 points total in her first three games since they inserted her into the starting lineup in the last two weeks, and then followed that up with an SEC career high 22 against Auburn. Foul on the floor. This is going to go against Vanderbilt. I believe that was called on LaChance. Yeah, LaChance took the brunt of the physical contact there, but she did initiate, make the original foul right there. But Stady let her know, hey, you're going to body me up. You're getting some of that back. Coons, mid-range jumper. Georgia's lead now at one again. More travel. Or did they call jump ball? They called jump ball instead, so Vanderbilt retains possession. Georgia is very typically good about stopping the driving lanes, really good help side defenders. But Vanderbilt's been getting through the seams. Foul on Stady came over the back to block the shot. That's going to put Kalen Smith at the line. Coach Ralph's got some really good baseline out of bounds plays. Puts a lot of pressure. I think it's one of the elements a lot of schools don't put much emphasis on trying to score on baseline out of bounds plays. You can see Vanderbilt does 
It puts a lot of pressure on the defense. It's almost like a special team situation in football. If you can get some points and a baseline out of bounds, that line out of bounds, is, it's bonus at the end of the game for you. Kalen Smith, just a 64% free throw shooter. Averages six points, five rebounds per game, and missed them both. And Bates the rebound for Georgia. So the Lady Bulldogs have a one-point lead. They'll come down the floor looking to stretch it. Georgia right now probably has their weakest three-point shooting perimeter team on the court at the moment. They're really going to have to work hard to move the ball again. Right there, Chapman, no, no pass fake. Team is just reads your eyes, like you mentioned. He gets in the pass lane, gets a deflection. You must ball fake, pass fake. Cambridge, as much as you can add, that's the best neutralizer for quickness is a fake. To your point, Richardson is the best three-point shooter on the floor for Georgia right now, 25%. Coons, who just hit the mid-range jumper, has not attempted a three this year. No, nah, you know, she knows her game. Michaela Coons knows her game. It's mid-range and drives to the hoop. She has hit back-to-back -back with ones to give Georgia a three-point lead. So it's critical that with this lineup in, Georgia's going to have to get inside touches, get Coons that mid-range jumper to get steady and take some touches inside. And of course, Coons played at UConn when Ralph was an assistant coach there. So they're very familiar with each other. Richardson off the mark on her three-point attempt. Bandy pushes. Moore circumvents the defense and gets it for a three-point attempt. Stady the rebound for Georgia. Stady, second board for her. She has eight points. Tied with Morrison for the team lead. That's two quick threes for Georgia in transition. Nobody ready to rebound, offensive rebound. Richardson and Stady back to back. Shot too quick. I think for anybody else was ready on the team. Georgia two for nine on their three so far tonight. 32% for the season, which is eighth in the conference. Alexander forced into a bad shot by Stady. Alexander's just one for four. Coombs. Rebound is... Turned into a jump ball underneath, so Georgia gets it. So Bates comes off the floor after nine minutes of work. Two points, two rebounds for her. Barker back on. Barker hasn't hit a three yet. 0 for 4 there. She's not getting the normal backspin she gets on her shots. Cambridge called for the foul. Second team foul, second foul on Cambridge, and the third team foul on Vanderbilt. Nice drive by Coons. Again, got to get those inside touches. Got to break down that zone with some penetration. Got the reach in. Again, for a game that's really strong defensive teams, very little foul. It just shows credit to the ladies who are playing in this game. Very disciplined, good defenders without fouling. Cambridge. Six, six fouls total so far in the game. Cambridge on the bench with two fouls, six points, three steals so far tonight. Georgia's going to try to get an inside touch for Stady or try to get Parker a three. Got to get her. She can get a mate before the half's over here. Georgia may have one, maybe two possessions left this half. Be nice to get Parker, get one in, feeling good. Get that made shot on her resume for the night. Forty-eight seconds to play in the first half. Isaacs comes out to set a screen. Barker doesn't take it. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Chapman with five on the clock. Barker spot up three. Hits the iron. Rebound by Washington. And Barker continues to struggle out there. 0 for 5 on her three-point attempts. She's not flicking her wrist like she normally does. Her backspin is really either non-existent or very slow. Not a normal rotation on her shot. Eight seconds to play in the half. Kalen Smith working against Isaacs. 
and Vanderbilt will not get a shot off on the final possession. And the Lady Bulldogs, who trailed by as much as six in this first half, take a three-point lead to the locker room. Stady and Morrison leading the way with eight. Smith has eight for Vandy. The land is dying, and the machines are out of control. Whatever comes, I will be ready. If that particular play doesn't happen, I don't know what happens with my career beyond that. Welcome back. It is halftime in Athens, Georgia. When you watch an SEC basketball game, you'll hear us talk a lot about impact players. But the Lady Bulldogs' impact in Georgia goes far beyond the court. Here's the story of team impact. We're just excited to have Randy as a part of our program. You know, we're excited to have her in the locker room, have her on the bench as much as she wants to be. I think that when we accept somebody into our program, she's a part of our family, and I hope she feels that. When she was diagnosed, I was on Facebook looking for um, support groups for me, because I had a lot of questions that um, only parents can answer. One of the parents had said something about Team Impact and how they um, pair them with a sports team um, in the area. I didn't expect Georgia, and I didn't expect a big college like this to even accept the offer. Once I brought it to our team, they immediately said they wanted to have you know, a role in Team Impact, and then we got to meet Randy. And so when we first met her, heard her story, we knew that she was really, really special, and we had an opportunity to get her on campus a few times in 2020, and then obviously the pandemic hit. So we didn't get a chance to do what we did today, which was our national signing day, and have her sign a letter of intent, have a press conference, give her a jersey. Um, and so today was a special day that we've been waiting for for a long time. We're excited about having you back around, having your family around, and you teaching us what resilience looks like. Under teaching us how to be strong and how to fight and how to, and how to have courage. So as much as we think we're, we're helping you, you're helping us. So thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Beginning of February of 2019, um, she had a rash on her foot and some pain. We took her to the doctor. They thought it was a um, cellulitis infection and um, they gave her a round of antibiotics and we thought we were done with it. We go back and it's still not better. And they did blood work and they told us, you need to go to CHOA for an MRI. So we go there and within an hour, the doctor comes in and says, your daughter has leukemia. So that was the beginning of a very long road. But after 818 days of treatment, she is now in remission and um, no longer on treatment. So right now we're going um, to monthly appointments and then we'll go every other month to make sure that she is um, cancer free and stays that way. And we're just so, so excited to have you. Congratulations and welcome to your official family. I've been on the Team Impact leadership team for about three years now, and we've been obviously uh, connecting with Randy. Since COVID hit, we've been on Zoom, uh, having every uh, activities every now and then, just talking to her, just keeping up with her. And honestly, she's been a light on my energy. Some days where I didn't feel like, you know, a little lethargic, just talking to Randy. She has just such a vibrant personality, so she always kept us up. I'm telling you, Randy is a light a shining of light and she's going to teach our players about courage and resilience and toughness and just share so much and when you look over and see Randy sitting there 
it's just impossible to have a bad day. So I'm excited for um, her being a part of our team and just moving forward, how we can both help each other. They've um, helped her through a lot of things, even if they don't talk about treatment or what she's going through, just having that support system, the camaraderie, and having people behind her more than just her family and more than just friends at school, but having an entire team behind her has helped her so much and will continue to help her. Go dogs to come. I thought we had a plan for dad. He was set to go to the senior living community right by my house. Then a friend suggested I talk to a place for mom. They really opened my eyes. My advisor listened and understood his needs and showed us options that were still nearby, but a better fit for dad. Now he's in a warm, engaging community with a big group of friends. I know we made the better choice. Our service comes at no cost to your family. Connect with us today. You and me, partner. Center of town, I knew. Nope. Daisy's got last one lessons at noon. Hey, two o'clock, that work? I got a spur fitting at two o'clock. How's about three? We don't need any more overscheduling, but we could all use more ways to save. What about Tuesday? Start of the second half here at Stegman Coliseum. Georgia leading Vanderbilt 26-23. As we take a look at the scores around the Southeastern Conference, we've got a shocker for you coming up here. Look at that, Florida. Lays it on, number seven, Tennessee, 84-59, the final there. Also Ole Miss, a winner on the road, beat Missouri 61-45. South Carolina, huge lead on Alabama at the half. That leads us into Charlie Cream's bracketology, and no doubt that could impact Tennessee yes. on that two line. South Carolina, a one seed. Georgia projected five seed. As you take a look at the rest of the teams in the conference, Florida, one of the last four in. That will improve with that victory tonight and Mississippi State last four out. Matt Stewart joined by Coach Mark Sloniker. And Coach, your thoughts on what we've seen so far here tonight. Vanderbilt came out playing very well. Their defense really disrupted Georgia offensively, but it looked like the Lady Bulldogs gathered themselves a little bit there in that second quarter. Yeah, we were torn off the air. It didn't really feel like it, but Georgia had taken the lead back, got some momentum. It felt like Vanderbilt was dominating the game. So. Coach Rouse, uh, game plan really was there. Hit the zone, they can zone press after they score. Being very disruptive defensively. Just getting Georgia out of rhythm. Georgia's not hitting any three-point shots. So far besides Q Morrison. Again, here's Vanderbilt at their best. Disruptive, getting you into trap, getting, making you over-penetrate, getting your head down, and making you pay in transition. Getting hands on basketballs. Again, the dribble drive penetration by Cambridge. Over and over again tonight, Vanderbilt break the Georgia defense down. Again, playing passing lanes just so smart. Really Georgia, good. though, start the one the person and all year long that steps up, gets them back. Q Morrison. So Schiller shifted it over to the two, and then she started bombing away the threes. Jenna Stady, another big time player, knows that's an offensive rebound opportunity when threes go up. She gets on that glass. Booms hit two big mid range shots before the half got over. Get Georgia lead, but Q Morrison stepping up those eight points was critical. Get Georgia back in the lead at home. Well, Q Morrison, two of three behind the three point line. The rest of the Lady Bulldogs are 0 for 7, and Sarah Ashley Barker is 0 for 5. Yeah, and again, she's a good shooter. She's been shooting really well lately. Um, last game, a little struggle, a little bit. Again, to me, just mechanically, this is the flick of the wrist. Her ball has very little rotation on it. Again, when she shoots her best, she's got a good snap to that wrist, gets that backspin going on her. So again, they'll, they'll look for her, and like Coach Taylor always says, shoot is going to shoot, yeah, <laughs> so and she's going to keep shooting. In Vanderbilt, no production really from their bench. They've only played uh, uh, seven players here tonight. LaChance five minutes off the bench, and Sasa Washington with six minutes off the bench. As you take a look at that stunner tonight wow. in Gainesville, and of a special interest to Georgia since the Lady Bulldogs will be hosting the Gators here at Stegman Coliseum Sunday at 1 o'clock on SEC Network. Yeah, Florida just keeps getting better, playing really good basketball, and wow, just getting a stunner for, not that they can't beat Tennessee, but to beat them by 25. And they're going to come in here with a lot of confidence on Sunday. It'll be interesting to see when Charlie Cream does his next 
bracketology how a loss like that impacts Tennessee on that two line. As you saw it was their worst loss since falling to number one Stanford in 2019. Wow. <laughs> Great win for Florida. So Commodores in the black start on offense led by as much as six in the first half and this three point deficit is their largest of the game. Moore. Rebound pops up in the air. Washington got it back. She's battling against Isaacs. And then Kaylin Smith, another bucket, as she becomes the first player to get to double figures tonight. She's got 10, and she's 5 of 8 from the floor. And Vanderbilt all season long really excels at offensive rebound, keeping balls alive that are undersized. But man, did they hit the offensive glass. That was a great way for them to get two, three on Cambridge. And these will be the first free throws for Georgia tonight as well. That's a big, big factor early in the third quarter here. Have Cambridge get a third. See what Coach Ralph is going to do. Looks down her bench and brings in Bella Lachance. So Lachance will replace Jordan Cambridge. You see Cambridge wears that bulky left brace on her left knee. She's had two ACL injuries in her career. Phenomenal that she has been able to recover to become the defensive presence that she is on the floor, leading the nation in total steals with 80. She goes to the bench tonight with three steals. Jordan, Jordan. needs to take advantage of this. Cambridge out, can be out for a little while. Foul's going to be on Georgia. Isaacs picks up her first personal. Gotta cut that baseline off. Good job again. Coach has given Lachance a lot of opportunity tonight to play. She has been productive in the minutes that she has received this season. She's been a good little spark plug off the bench tonight. Ball was deflected coming over the back. Barker is called for the foul. And Commodores are going to the line. Barker picks up her first personal foul. And Brene Alexander will go to the stripe. Against Stadio, the block shot on the perimeter. When you're a defensive player, you kind of get boxed out responsibility. An air ball or a block shot there throws you totally off. And she just took advantage of it and got to the more aggressive, got the rebound. Well, Coach, I never got around to asking how long will Coach Ralph keep Cambridge on the bench? And the answer is not very long. She's right back in the wow. game. Uh, she knows this is a critical part of the game. She cannot let Georgia get up to a double digit lead. She's got to keep it right here and just take, run the dice. Cambridge is a veteran player. Understand be made a little less aggressive. Try to stay out of foul trouble. Barker being harassed out there by Washington Stady. Mid-range jumper. She's now in double figures. She's got 10 on five of six shooting from the floor. That's a good job by Barker. Get that deep penetration. Sucking two defenders to you. Kalen Smith back at it on the offensive end. Leading score in this game with 12. What a night for Kalen Smith. So poised, so confident right now. Coombs steps inside the arc and hits the jumper. Third bucket for Michaela Coombs. She knows her range, and that's right about where it is. And hit the two big shots in the same. Wow, Cambridge unforced turnover. Ninth turnover for the Commodores. And Coombs knows her range. Bark again. Barker set her up. Nice job. A little penetration. Those two. Mid-range jumpers, Coons hit in the first half, gave Georgia the lead, gives them some confidence. Back the other way, Morrison, she's now in double figures. Yeah, Morrison, just a veteran player, understands the game. First possession, she was right at Cambridge, gets her third foul. In the zone, Cambridge is going to be a little more protective, not to play man-to-man. -man. But Q Morrison just goes right at her in the zone. No, she's not going to play her up tough. And Horan gets a great mid-range shot. And pass deflected out of bounds by Morrison. You see Coach Ralph early this half. She was trying to get Alexander going. Alexander didn't score much first half. They're getting the opportunities to score. But her physicality, they're trying to get her posted up on the Georgia perimeter players on the switch situations. Trying to get her more touches. 
Alexander is fifth in the SEC in field goals made. 128. She has one tonight and one for the Commodores. Good, strong, muscular play by Demi Washington down on the low block to draw the foul and get the basket. Some of the switching that George is doing, Vanderbilt's really making a play. Again, a game inside the game, right? Check out those matchups. So when Georgia switches, big against little, they are immediately posting up the Georgia perimeter players. That's the third miss for the Commodores at the line tonight. They're four of seven. Foul underneath. It's going to go against the Commodores, and Kaylin Smith picks up her first personal. That's her first. Georgia trying to look for that high low. They're so good. Everybody in the league knows they do it. They're so good at it. It's hard to stop it. Stating with a good look for the Isaacs through the foul. Barker. 0 for 6 behind the three-point line. Again, just a lazy rotation. she got to get that snap. Washington lodges between the rim and the backboard. So far in this game, it really hasn't been a chance for either team to really get a big run going. I think Vanderbilt's had a 6-0 run. Georgia's had a 5-0 run. Just one of those games that's been grinding. Teams playing play. Really, the defensive has been outstanding in the game. And it's really disrupted either team from having the opportunity to just put together that 7-0, 8-0, 9-0 run to kind of get some separation in the game. Georgia's largest run tonight has been a 5-0 run. And the largest for Vanderbilt has been a 6-0 run. Georgia back up by five again, matching their largest lead of the night. Cambridge hard off the backboard this time. Long outlet to Coombs. Back to Stady. Nicely done. And Shea Ralph's going to want a timeout right here. Gets it. Georgia leading by seven. It's their biggest of the night. 38-31 with six and a half to play in the quarter. right here and a mini run for the Lady Bulldogs not quite the 8-0 run you were talking about a few moments ago coach but half of that yes it's been hard to come by tonight again Georgia put it together got a nice job through their defense got some nice stops and Q Morrison in transition trying to get Vanderbilt before they can set that zone defense up Coombs same thing just deep penetration driving hard you can see it was a point of emphasis for coach Taylor and her staff to get Georgia perimeter plays to penetrate we've seen Barker twice all right, penetrate that zone, set up a shooter. We see Morrison right there, and we see Coombs right there just penetrating, setting up their teammates, getting good shots right there. Georgia's got their field goal percentage only up to 51.5%. They're a slow start to the game shooting. Vanderbilt came out on fire. They're already down to 39%. So the game is kind of seesawing here to Georgia's favor. Stady and Morrison have combined for 24 of Georgia's 38 points. That's more. Misses the three. Battle for the loose ball is won by Morrison. Had it stolen away by Smith. They find the open man underneath. And Washington sticks it in. She's got six. And Vanderbilt gets back to within five. Coming out of that timeout by Coach Ralph. Yeah, Morrison had it. Tried to throw it up her leg and missed it. <laughs> Great job by Vanderbilt. Stay with that position. Get the two points. Underneath Bates, overplayed on defense, and Bates makes some play pay for it. You can see Georgia's not selling for that jump shot they were getting early, eight, ten seconds in the shot clock position in the first half. They're now being patient, penetrating that zone, and trying to get those inside touches. Cambridge beats everybody on defense to get the layup. Eight for her. 
That's some design that Coach Ralph has put in. That's two back-to-back -back possessions trying to get Cambridge to turn that corner on the right side of the floor, either to score or set up a shooter. Stady at the foul line. Rebound snagged out of the air by Cambridge, runs right by Stady. They have numbers and saw the official on the wing, thought it was a teammate, and threw it out of bounds. Our official should have been ready to shoot it. She had her hands ready. She could have drained that three. She was wide open. <laughs> but this is what Coach Ralph casually mentioned to us today, right? That they, they throw the ball out of bounds for no reason. She wasn't joking. It's like the third time this game. And Georgia nearly goes backcourt. It was last touched by the Lady Bulldogs. They turn it over. And Nicholson's got to be strong with the ball right there. Timeout. Half minute, halfway through the third quarter, and a five point lead for Georgia. Thursday night, the stars are out in Los Angeles. We got that magic! To kick off Super Bowl 56 weekend. Touchdown! Celebrate the biggest season ever with host Keegan Michael Key. Let me hear you, come on! Find out who will bring home the game's most prestigious awards. Makes it look easy! The Pro Football Hall of Fame. Keep rising, keep changing the world. We're made in the NFL Honors, presented by Invisalign, Thursday at 9, 8 central. You and me, partner, center of town, high noon. Nope, Daisy's got last one lessons at noon. Hey, two o'clock, that work? I got a spur fitting at two o'clock, how's about three? We don't need any more overscheduling, but we could all use more ways to save. What about Tuesday? Five point lead for Georgia, coach. This is where the Lady Bulldogs are winning the game right now. It really is, you know, when you see a zone, the tendency is zone's gonna give you jump shots. When you come out, I'll shoot jump shots. And I mentioned earlier, a lot of coaches at home, Okay with that, but again, the best way to beat that zone, get a high-low game going, get some penetration in the gaps, throw that second defender, drop off passes, get high percentage shots, and you're seeing it here. 14 paint points for Georgia, either out of fast break, penetration, or drop off passes to the post players. And the post players are scoring even from the mid-range for Georgia, so that's how you beat a zone. That's how you get wear Vandy down is that way, and they've really done a good job this half of doing it. Stolen by Nicholson as Cambridge got herself too far underneath the basket. That time they designed it out coming from the left wing, heard a drive over on the baseline. Good things happened the last two times on the right side, but not so much that time. Bates throws it away, and Q Morrison can't save it. Vanderbilt beats her to it, so that's a turnover. Low bounce pass to Timmy Washington. What hustle by Cambridge. Q Morrison was just trying to get back there and get to the ball it's going to be an over and back violation and Cambridge turned it into points right away for Vanderbilt. Yeah, Q Morrison tried to keep it alive by not touching it. Maybe they could get recovery on it. Didn't work that way. Just a boy some bad passes here three in a row by Georgia. Another bad pass out of the post and again, Vanderbilt just out hustled Georgia in that one. Great job by Cambridge. Washington in the right place at the right time. Ten steals for the Commodores tonight. And three straight, just horrendous passes by Georgia. Turnovers just gives Vanderbilt life. They pull away by seven, make those careless turnovers, just give Vanderbilt life. Chance that, hey, we're just going to hover around, hover around. Hopefully at the end it's a three-minute game, tight score, and we can win it. Had a little bit of a stoppage here. I don't know whether Cambridge had a little nick or something and some blood that they needed to clean up. But she stays in the game, which is good news for Vanderbilt. She has been the spark plug for them tonight. Inside they go to Alexander, can't get her shot off, and then steals it right back after Georgia stepped out of bounds. Coombs turned it over. Yeah, Vanderbilt so aggressive on the offensive glass. Get to it. You gotta be so strong with the basketball. Even once you think you have it, she tries to dribble out, trips over her foot really right there. Vanderbilt might got away with a foul. Alexander tries to go through the defense, blocking foul on Georgia. So Alexander trying to assert herself. It's not been a Brene Alexander kind of night offensively, so she's trying to make something happen right here. She really is, and again, good for her. She's stepping up. You know, first. Couple plays, possessions for Vanderbilt to start the half. 
Coach Ralph had a couple of you know plays designed for her, trying to get her touches, trying to get her involved. They know they need her point production. Smith's having a phenomenal game for her, playing above her average, but for them to win and get this road win, Alexander's going to have to step up and be productive. She's three for three at the foul line tonight. Team leading 74% for the season, and she cuts the Georgia lead to one. Commodore's now six of nine at the foul line. Georgia two for two tonight. Hugh Morrison runs away from the defense. Pass was blocked by Moore. Hugh Morrison stepped up every time Vanderbilt's made a run. They have made big runs in this game, and many ones, but she stepped up. Nicholson, and that's a blocking foul on Vanderbilt. Basket will count. Yeah, she's just a little bit late over there. The offensive player already, Nicholson already had established her path to the basket. Again, really not a good possession for Georgia that time. With those three straight turnovers, they really just could not get in sync there. Q Morrison had the pass deflected. But Nicholson finally got the high-low game they want. Got it right there. Again, saw a seam, was able to attack the rim. Somebody was able to crack up Nicholson from the bench. She started laughing. She's just a 48% free throw shooter, maybe trying to take her mind off the free throw. Yeah, with Stady graduating this year, she's really going to have to step up her game this year. She has so much ability. She's a really good post player, but, boy, free throw shooting is going to have to be a big element for her in the offseason to get better at. Stady is so proficient at the free throw line. And Stady's a 77% free throw shooter, something that she really worked on from early in her career as well. Wasn't always that good. Three minutes to play in the quarter. Georgia leading by three. Georgia's gone to their bench. You got three subs in the game. Kalen Smith had to fire it up there to beat the shot clock, and it glanced off the iron. It'll be Georgia's ball. That's just that's one of the rare poor shots from her tonight, but she had to force it. Yeah, no choice right there. Had to get it up. And they're so good at offensive rebound, I just throw it up there, right? Everybody attack. Coombs had it stripped away by Alexander. Another steal. Alexander loses her man and hits the mid-range jumper. And Vanderbilt has cut it to one, and Coombs is yet to get off the floor. It looked like her leg just buckled. She tried to move, transition. And Alexander, really good move right there, staying aggressive offensively. Wow. It was, as they would call in football, a non-contact injury. Of concern because whenever you see that in football or basketball, somebody goes down without being hit, your mind starts going into bad places. Absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, Coon is such a great player. She's putting no pressure whatsoever on either leg. They've got her suspended a, above the floor. Hope the best for Michaela Coombs. She's waited for her opportunity to become a bona fide star in this Georgia program after starting her career at UConn. Gatorade Player of the Year, coming out of the Wesleyan School in Atlanta. McDonald's All-American. They'll take her right to the locker room. Well, she's had a great year. Just been so vital to success of the Lady Dogs this season. Georgia's going to have four subs in the game to try to probably finish out this quarter, see if Q Morrison can get this bunch to build that lead back up again. But credit Vanderbilt, forcing turnovers, active hands again, capitalizing on the offensive end. Morrison, three-pointer. 
Rebound. Cambridge comes away with it. And then from behind, Richardson with the steal for Georgia. To the baseline it goes, and Richardson rim out. Nicholson the offensive rebound and the miss. Kalen Smith gets the rebound for Vanderbilt. Commodores come down the floor. Less than two to play here in the third quarter. A chance to reclaim the lead. Washington drive. Shot it short. Nicholson the rebound. Morrison long pass to a streaking Chapman and a layup. Great job by Nicholson getting that block shot. Founder point guard, Hugh Morrison. Chapman's so fast from the soccer days. He can really fly down the court. Great lead pass by Morrison. It really looked like she shifted into another gear when that ball got in the air. Three-point lead, Georgia. Long strides to the basket, and Bates blocks it out of bounds. Back-to-back -back good possessions by Nicholson. And Bates on the defensive end, getting those block shots, being those rim protectors. You, we talked throughout the game. Vanderbilt really wants to penetrate those Georgia Pruner players. And that back line again, good steal inside. And they call a jump ball right there when it appeared Nicholson had come away with it. Possession arrow favors Vanderbilt. And Vanderbilt, Coach Ralph does such a great job. The offensive boards, you know, they don't get it initially. They're scrapping, slapping at you. Making life difficult on you. And it pays off with an extra possession. 40 seconds left in the quarter. Entry pass right into the hands of Nicholson. And that's the third great defensive possession by Nicholson. Morrison elbow in traffic. Tried to get her own miss. And Washington the rebound for the Commodores. Again, Vandy comes down the floor for the tie. Last touched by Vanderbilt. Georgia play one for one shot. Vanderbilt will try to speed him up here. Try to get one more turnover before the quarter ends. Morrison down the floor. Ten to go in the quarter. Chapman. See where the ball goes. He'll swing it over to Richardson. Back door to Morrison and banked it in at the buzzer. Actually, three tenths left on the clock and a foul called on the play as well. It'll put Morrison at the line for a chance at a three point play. Yeah, set design play, call play from the bench. He'll pick the picker on the backside against his own. Usually you save that to the fourth quarter, but Coach Taylor dialed it up. To finish out the third Morrison. quarter. We'll go to the line for the Lady Dogs. Shooting so Georgia a chance to make it a six-point lead going into the fourth quarter. Okay, they're gonna take a look at the review here. They're they haven't told us yet what they're reviewing. Uh, trying to get the time right. There's more time than three tenths of a second. Yeah, it looks like they'll probably reset the clock at 0.8.9. What's funny about that play is a design play. Everybody in the country has it in their repertoire against the zone. Nicholson didn't even set the screen. She ran right by. And Morris has still got open uh, for the pass. For a beautiful pass delivery right there. Again, Morrison's with her outstanding free throw shooting. This is huge for Georgia trying to get that lead back up to six points going into the fourth quarter. Wow, they went up. They added a lot more time than I thought they would. They must be taking it back to when the foul was actually committed. 
But nonetheless, a three-point opportunity here for Q Morrison. She completes it. 47-41, Georgia the lead. And Cambridge takes the inbounds, doesn't do anything with it. And that is the end of the third quarter. Six-point lead for the Lady Bulldogs as they outscore Vanderbilt. 21-18 in the third quarter. The Lady Bulldogs' highest scoring quarter of the night. And a six-point advantage as we head to the fourth. The land is dying, and the machines are out of control. Whatever comes, I will be ready. The undisputed middleweight championship is at stake. Is I'm still the best in the world. Robert Whittaker! Be careful what you ask for. Untangled. Seven forty-one Georgia leading as we head to the fourth quarter. And, Coach, we take a look at the story of the score. And part of that has been Brene Alexander, who averages 15 and a half per game, been held to eight, really has not been a factor in the Vanderbilt offense. The flip side of that, you could say Commodores are in it, and she hasn't been a factor. Yeah, absolutely. Smith has really picked up the slack for her. But, she can. she's been a little more aggressive. Coach Brown has designed a few plays for her in that quarter. So, look for them to go to her. And try to build on her scoring opportunities this quarter here. But again, Vanderbilt, again, Georgia's hope is veteran team, experience, deep team. They're just going to wear Vanderbilt down over 40 minutes. So Vanderbilt's hanging in there, though. They just keep hanging around. They've let Georgia pull away by more than seven points so far. Again, big quarter. The first five minutes of this quarter will be really critical to see how this game's going to go. We've done our best to muscle through and battle through tonight. Georgia's Outstanding women's basketball sports information director as Richardson puts it in to give Georgia an eight-point lead. Trey Littlefield is under the weather and has not been able to help us here tonight. They they basically have brought in the entire sports information <laughs> department to try to replace him. Only tonight. way you can do it. I and mean, they've got everybody here trying to do the job that Trey does by himself. So Trey, we hope you feel better. We'll see you soon. At the halfway mark, all the votes were in. He was SID of the year so far at the halfway mark. So we've got to get him back. Trey, we need you, buddy. But Richardson did a nice job on the offensive end for Jordan. Get that offensive glass. Again, it's so hard to box out in that zone. Take advantage of it. Get to the boards. Alexander now in double figures. They were free her up on the inbounds pass. Well, they run some good out of bounds plays. Baseline of bounds plays, Vanderbilt. Wow. Big foul right there. Alexander comes out and collides with Morrison. Alexander picks up her first personal. Nobody in any real foul trouble outside of uh, players. Cambridge, well, Cambridge has three, three, but she picked up three early, and she's played a quarter now without picking up another. And Coombs, unfortunately, she, uh, well, no, I was looking at the wrong category, and she's out right now in the locker room after injuring herself. And we'll effort to bring you some kind of update on her condition if we can get it. We're you know, it's a minute and a half into the fourth quarter, and only one team foul for each team. A big, big shot there by Moore. Vanderbilt just keeps hanging around, hanging around. It's the second three-pointer for her and another turnover. Another steal for the Commodores. Twelve of them tonight. Trailing on the play and stepping into the shot. Miss. Foul's going to be called on Vanderbilt. Washington gets whistled for the foul. Second and second team foul. Yeah, Washington's just an outstanding offensive rebounder, especially so far as establishing herself as a player in the SEC. And you see she's got a bright future ahead of her. Forty-nine forty-six, Georgia leads by three. Richardson in the corner. Rebound controlled by Vanderbilt. And foul's going to be called on Georgia. That'll put Moore at the line. Checking in for the Lady Dogs. Natalie Bates. 
Mallory Bates will come in now. Diana Moore, eight points, two of two at the line. Commodore six of nine at the line. Fourth miss for them tonight. Haven't been a great free throw shooting team in conference play. In fact, dead last, under 62%. They get one of them. Two-point lead, Vanderbilt. Two-point deficit, Vanderbilt, pardon me. Inside they go, and Bates. The defense went after Stady and left Bates wide open. Four-point lead, Georgia. And Chapman set that up. The first half, she picked up her drill twice just over the half-court line, trap zone. That time she went deeper and further, found Stady in the high pose. Stady in the high-low game, so unselfish. Easy layup for Bates. Offensive foul, Commodores. Well, the previous possession, Morrison had asked the official, went over and asked, hey, I think I got bumped. He looked the screen by Washington. And right there, pretty obvious one right there, going out of her way, yep. a little shoulder hit, and Chapman on the back cut. But Morrison, again, <laughs> captain, super senior, working those officials earlier, kind of set that up, make sure they had an eye on it. That's the second foul on Sasha Washington in this quarter, stating the miss, and a foul on Georgia going for the rebound. The stadium the last, say her last three mid-range jump shots, the last two especially, she aimed them a little more and shot them like she normally. First half, just in a smooth stroke, in rhythm. She aimed it a little bit right there. But Richardson, again, seizing the opportunity of minutes here today in a, in a critical SEC game, tight game, getting crashing those offensive boards. I got that wrong. Sasha Washington was actually called for the foul. Goes to the bench with three, then Stady with the bucket off the inbounds, and a six-point lead for Georgia. Moore backdoor cut nicely executed by the Commodores as Demi Washington knocks it down. Wow, what a beautiful play. Moore just really set that up. Her presence, her threat of her being able to shoot it, drew two Georgia defenders, and what a beautiful pass. Demi Washington becomes the third Commodore to get to double figures. She has 10 points. Eight on the shot clock for the Lady Bulldogs. Morrison launches the three. Kick out, rebound, last touch by Washington. You could see her cringe as it bounced off her hands and out of bounds. You know, Richardson's attempt at the offensive glass just made that happen. She saw it, felt, heard her, felt her. And went to reach for the ball instead of just letting it go out of bounds. He thought Richardson might be coming. They work it around to Richardson, barely scraped the iron. Lady Dogs are 2 of 15 shooting threes tonight. Morrison has both of the threes. Came from behind and got the steal. And none this half. A lot of contact underneath, and only in an out-of-bounds call. Vanderbilt just scrapping on defense, getting hands on basketballs, playing so hard. Just want to hang around. They just they can't. George just can't put them away. Can't get that lead up to double digits. Again, if you coach Ralph, what she wants here, two, two and a half minutes to go to be right here. Three, four-point game. Anything can happen. Anybody can beat anybody in those kind of games, those kind of situations. They cannot in the next three minutes let Georgia pull away to a double-digit lead. Just probably don't have enough firepower to overcome that in the last minutes of a game. Barker checks in for Georgia. Been a tough night for her offensively. One for seven, 0 for six on her threes. And what Barker did earlier was just penetrate that zone, set up her teammates for shots. Nicely done. Bates off glass. Ten for Bates. She's the third lady dog in double figures. And Chapman did a good job. She faked with the whole thing was going to go to the left side of the floor. She set up Bates for that pass. Alexander for three. In and out. Barker the rebound. Commodores are now two for ten on their threes. 
Yeah, Chapman, just a great job. Good read. Looked like everything was going to go to Q Morrison. Vanderbilt was just shaping their defense towards Morrison, the threat of her. Chapman made a recognition, saw Bates wide open, made a nice delivery pass. Chapman with three assists to go with her four points tonight. Georgia throws it away. 20 turnovers. Woo. And you have a lead, though. <laughs> 20 turnovers, you have a six-point lead. Yep. Only made two threes, both of them in the first half, and you still have a six-point lead. Well, you got to fight here because Vanderbilt is doing everything they can to win this basketball game. They are fighting, playing hard. Commodores have scored 16 points off those 20 Georgia turnovers. Traveling, Caitlin Smith shuffled her feet as she collected the basketball. Vanderbilt averages 17 turnovers a game. They're, they're a turnover prone team. Coach Ralph in her first year, that's kind of normal for your first year team. And she'll get improved that. She'll improve the talent base and the players, good experience. Stady came flying down the lane and Bates hit her with the assist. 16 for Stady. She's now at her average. Again, those deep passes against that zone. Get an interior touches. High percentage shots. This lead for Georgia is their largest of the night. It comes now with four and a half to play in the game. Three on the shot clock. Kaylin Smith at the elbow. And Bates controls the rebound. Chapman across. Morrison attacks the basket. Leaves it for Bates, who sticks it in. Bates with 12 points, just one below her career high. 10-point lead for Georgia. One of the keys of the game I had on my notes was the Georgia bench has got to produce. And <laughs> boy, as Valerie Bates stepped up big time tonight. Commodores now three plus minutes without scoring. Demi Washington, tough luck on the layup attempt. Stady slow getting up. Now she trots down the floor. Stady for three, off iron. Barker gets the offensive rebound. A lot of clock running here without a break. We're under three and a half to go now. Chapman's done a good job this half attacking that zone. And knocked out of bounds by Cambridge. It'll be Vandy's ball when we get back, but Georgia now leads by 10 with just over three to play here in the contest. I thought we had a plan for Dad. He was set to go to the senior living community right by my house. Then a friend suggested I talk to a place for Mom. They really opened my eyes. My advisor listened and understood his needs and showed us options that were still nearby, but a better fit for Dad. Now he's in a warm, engaging community with a big group of friends. I know we made the better choice. Our service comes at no cost to your family. Connect with us today. We love our new home. Lots of windows, great light. But the birds. At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. Why is her so angry? For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. Problematic for Vanderbilt is Stady and Bates have combined for 28 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 of Mallory's points have come in the second half. Yeah, they really have. There's plenty of emphasis out to come out of halftime. First, again, Vanderbilt's style of play just kind of leads you to take jump shots. Georgia knew they've got to get penetration, inside touches. And boy, Mallory Bates has been a recipient of some beautiful passes. And then for her to finish around the rim, put the ball in there, 28 and 10 out of your four and five players. That's a good night. And yeah, Bates is six for six from the floor, six rebounds to go along with the 12. Even has a couple of blocks, a steal, and a beautiful assist to Stady a few moments ago. Yeah, she, you know, as mentioned, we need Georgia needs some bench production. And she has been the one, but again, Chapman, her stats are gonna be used, but done a really nice job in here. Richardson on the offensive glass, playing it hard, didn't shoot it well. Again, nice lift from the Georgia bench. And Alexander kicks it off her ankle out of bounds. I believe Stady might be 
nursing a sore ankle. She's kicked the shoes off, That's what it looks and like. she's on the bench. That'll be something that Georgia's going to want to get healed up before Sunday in the Florida Gators, who beat Tennessee tonight by 25. Well, let that marinate in. <laughs> 25. That's crazy. Unheard of. And Bates to Chapman. Scoops it up and in. And Georgia may have finally put this one away with a 12-point lead and two and a half to play. Alexander gets loose, misses the shot, gets her own miss. Vanderbilt's got a score in a hurry. Cambridge tried to bank it in, and the rebound by Nicholson. Five boards for her tonight. Bates left it short. Nicholson offensive rebound and put in. And Georgia's just deaf. Size has just worn Vanderbilt down. Vanderbilt has fought so hard and played so hard. But the minutes just take their toll on you in the course of the game. And on the deep bench, and Georgia's depth and size have just worn them down. Two, do, two good defensive teams. And Cambridge got fouled on the putback. Georgia on a 10-0 run over the last four-plus minutes and a 14-2 run over the last six minutes to pull away in this game. A really good fourth quarter by Georgia again. Stuck to the game plan, got the inside touches they wanted. Got a lot of stops. Vanderbilt, a lot of the penetration. The best they were getting in the first half. Just so hard to come by for them to take and have really credit Georgia's defense. And you have to keep Vanderbilt off the offensive glass. They get, they make up for some possessions and their, their lack of perimeter shooting. They get on that offensive glass, and Georgia really limited to their opportunities there. Especially in the second half tonight. Cambridge going to finish with another nice night on the box score on a losing end, it looks like. Ten points for Cambridge, five rebounds, three assists, four steals. That's a good night. Foul called on Vanderbilt. At this point, they can only hope that Georgia misses free throws. And for Sarah Ashley Barker, this is an opportunity. She didn't shoot it well tonight. Missed all her threes. The free throw line is a place to kind of get your stroke back, right? You have a routine set up. You've got a, 10 seconds to get it done. You have a routine you do all the time. You practice it all the time. Again, really good backspin right there. Look, on her threes, either no backspin or a very lazy backspin. On her free throw, she's flicking that wrist and knocking it down. You know, it's got to be frustrating as she misses it. Nicholson gets the offensive rebound and missed the putback. Got to be frustrating. You come out early, you're out two hours ahead of everybody else taking three-point shots, and you're thinking, well, it's going to pay off for me tonight, and it doesn't. That's right. But you just got to stay with it. Again, she's a good shooter, really good player. It'll come back. Nicholson, the offensive rebound, got fouled from behind. Bates is twice now here in the last minute or so had a chance to get a new career high and had it fall off the rim. Well, that one just teetered on that rim. <laughs> I didn't know it was go. Which way was it going to go? But Bates and Nicholson are really pounding the offensive glass themselves right now. Javin Nicholson at the line. Four points tonight, eight rebounds. Coach Ralph of Vanderbilt, you know, she's taking on the challenge of the Vanderbilt program. They've got experience at Vanderbilt, she understands. Her husband's been here before. She's rebuilt the program as an assistant coach at Pittsburgh. And she's got to be excited. And we, we both, you and I, have seen Vanderbilt be very good in basketball, women's basketball. And I think she'll get them back there where they need to be. They haven't been to the NCAA tournament since 2014. That's stunning. <laughs> I saw they realize that's that. Uh, when you consider they played in 27, they played in 27 of the 39 all-time wow. NCAA tournaments, and they've missed for the last seven seasons. How about that? It's really, yeah. Shows you. But again, a proud program. Very successful. Make sure there's no question. This league is so great, oh, top to bottom. So many great coaches, and but she'll build them up, make them highly competitive. So basically, you do the math, and 
taking factoring in the COVID year when there was right. no tournament. It's roughly before this streak, they had played in 27 of, say, maybe 32 right. all-time tournaments, and now they've gone seven years without. Yeah. And Shea Ralph, they feel like she's the coach to get them back there, the sixth head coach in program history. She's coached in probably the greatest women's basketball program of all time, at least certainly of the last 20 years. That would be UConn. You know, Tennessee Volunteer fans listening, they, they might not agree with you, but hey, we'll go well, with that's it. Why, well, that's why <laughs> I tried to hedge my bet a little bit by saying of the last 20 years. There you go, good man. Yeah. Six right. NCAA titles, four straight, 12 Final Four appearances. Yeah, I know your point, but she is, she's been successful everywhere she's been. Vanderbilt's oh such goodness. a great school, great program. She will have them. Foul was called on Barker. I was just a little nervous that she might bang her head on the floor. Well, I know it. Whoa. Wow, that, uh, that Alexander got away with one right yeah, there. I don't think they got that one right. Inbounds, shot blocked by Bates. Still getting it done. Let's see if we can get her a new career high. I hope she's going to stick back here, inside touch. Three blocks for her tonight. And a nearly another steal. Nicholson. Floor spreads down to seven on the shot clock. And Nicholson puts it in. A beautiful pass from Richardson. Eight points, nine rebounds for Nicholson tonight. And Georgia a steal. And Richardson will lay it in. Alexander finally hits a three after all that. Her first of the night coming way too late. And Georgia 71, 56 winners. Lady Bulldogs improved to 17 and four, six and three in the SEC. They've won five of their last six games. They're only lost during that stretch to Tennessee. They'll play Florida on Sunday, who just beat Tennessee by 25. That should be a great game here in the Stigman Coliseum on Sunday. I think we'll have a great crowd here in Athens for that game. Stady finishes with 16. Bates has a tremendous game for Georgia. 12 points, six rebounds, three blocks. Vanderbilt drops to 12 and 11 overall. Their two game winning streak comes to an end. They are three and six in the SEC. And now for Coach Mark Sloniker and our entire SEC Network team, I'm Matt Stewart. Good night from Athens. Georgia wins, beating Vanderbilt 71-56.